Students' awareness of seasons of the year and present summer vocabulary. Mm -hmm, yes, also to practice present continuous for future use and uh, their plans for summer. Yes, also present continuous for describing temporary actions on holidays. And then just wait a little. Wait for it. Till August. And I can enjoy introducing past simple versus present perfect and how I spend my summer essays. Oh no, not this again. Yes, Francine, this again. These are probably not the best ways to keep your pupils and teenage students loyal, nor are they great tools to fix their attention on English throughout summer. If you want to eat or drink in summer, do not go in for teaching. Summer is time for CPD. Summer is coming. What? Teaching is not seasonal. My pupils never stop studying, and on July Sunday morning they crowd outside my door. Actually, yes. Having children and teenagers interested, motivated, will make them happy and they will learn something new during the summer. For making them to be more interested and motivated, we need to be... We need to be... We need to be more interested and motivating, supposedly. Obviously, change something. Well, you can put a poster on a wall, turn the desks or chairs, well, not upside down, but sideways a little bit. And of course, change the format of classes. Do not ask them, how was your school? Because they have no school, huh? Uh -huh. Change the very procedure, I don't know, give them high fives. Wear a swimming hat, swimming goggles, make some summer attributes, maybe flip flops. Maybe everybody has to wear flip flops for your classes, why not? And here are some things you can do for the procedure. Option one, do you remember the nowadays poshed flipped classroom technique? Kirill was talking about this. You set a new topic as homework and build the lesson around their primary knowledge about this topic. Go for it in summer. I'm um, Tell your students, especially teenagers, that summer is actually vacations time and you're not supposed to teach, even though you are. So they're not supposed to learn. So you change the roles. You prepare the flipped homework they study the topic at home and teach you and other students in class. So, do you need to pay money? Do you need to pay them after this? Do, are they getting salary? I mean, you, you, you can do that, I don't know, some bonuses or whatever, sweets, chocolates. Depending on the level, let them also design a task for you and let them organize presentation and practice themselves. Don't forget about performance. Performance is anyway needed to build up the competence so you prepare it. And after the first part of a class on flipped topic, you naturally set the free practice task. It is usually a funny, autonomous and free activity in itself, so it will not disrupt the whole lesson. For example, your students have just taught you models of deduction. Ask them to write down five ideas about your performance. How are you doing this? During the lesson. Do it again. Be careful with flipped homework, it should be well designed. If you use a teaching pack with integrated flipped classroom parts, use them. For example, Gateway has great videos for this purpose. In other cases, we can use rules, part of any level student's book, YouTube video or the video you record yourself. So, why do we need all those things? Why do we need uh, the flipped classroom because it boosts autonomy, it reduces teacher talking time in class, the students will not forget their summer course because it is new experience for them. Well, unless uh, you teach them flipped classroom before, then it's just a regular experience. But I mean, it's still engaging. Option number two. two. If your amazing pupils are younger and flipped classroom is hardly possible, try something different. For example, change the format of homework for the whole summer. Do not ask them to learn words. Do students actually learn words at home? I, I, think, I think it's like USSR time. I can reach the apple. I can reach the apple. I can reach the apple. Do not ask them to write new words, to do uh, boring exercises or revise or repeat or write. Yeah, give them 
or their parents one of the great internet resources or links we share today. Right there. Why are we whispering? One at a time is a better choice, not all of them at once. Ask them to enjoy their English there in the internet. It's too good to be true. Because it's gonna be like games and songs and whatever. So vocabulary, boring exercises. Leave them for the classroom at home. Fun, because people still think of computers and internet as fun. So what are those resources? Super simple songs. It's a YouTube channel and a site with activities for children. British Council Kids. The collection of games is probably the vastest. Plus, they have an app for the phone, so download it. Pink Penguiny. It is a fantastic channel with animated books and crafts. Other two apps are Lingo Kids and Hello English. You can even use education.com. It makes them feel that English is fun. It wins their parents over. Parents would, would see that they actually enjoy doing English exercises. And of course, it makes students like English for their own reasons. Maybe they like uh, the song. Maybe they like the mascot of a website. I don't know. I love this song. All these websites could be your personal tools to inspire your students. Option three. Focus all your classroom activities on listening, speaking, reading, and writing, while grammar and vocabulary would be just secondary aims. On the contrary, make your lessons vocabulary centric. Topics for vocabulary based lessons can be found in our blog, Sky Teach. So click on it, follow the link, and uh, go for it. Option number four personalize your lessons. If you haven't done that already, if you have never tried it, summer is a good time to start. So bring something that you have and is connected with you personally and tell your students a story about it. For example, this Oscar was awarded to me as uh, the favorite guy of the HR team in uh, the company you work for. Nice try. Or anything else. Just be sincere. Just be yourself and tell them something about yourself. Ask your students to prepare similar stories and objects for the next lesson, making it a classical storytelling or show and tell lesson. And of course, award each story for being the most interesting, the most frightening, the most mysterious, or simply the funniest, the most humorous, the most boring. <laughs> the most boring, don't make that. Option number five. Create a special program and call it Summer Camp, City Camp, English Camp. Organize it around superheroes or Harry Potter or Lego or whatever you like and your students like. You can easily imitate city camps that English centers do. Make it English Handmade Quest or CLIL or whatever you're good at. I'm so good at yoga. And of course, don't forget that it all has to be in English. I know. Make it a special day project, for example, a chocolate day or princess day, Disney day. Those activities may not be educational, but they would uh, be in English and your students would totally remember them. And this summer will work for you and for your students. And if you still are looking for the summer job, if you have no students during the summer, <laughs> and if you're still looking for some students to teach during the summer, join our team of teachers and start teaching after you tap the link in the description of the video. So thank you very much for watching, enjoy your summer and goodbye ladies and gentlemen.